now support the show go over to our support store and get some awesome looking clothing we got rock on hats rock on shirts the rock on hats are embroidered get your exclusive merchandise now rock on era begins again Welcome to the show! Yesterday's show on COVID-19 was pretty cool, man. Very informative from Tommy on 1%. Thanks for sending those uh, answers into the questions that I gave you. A lot of people learned a lot of stuff. And yeah, there was some boneheads out there, but there always is. Always is. Uh, secondly, I want to give a huge, huge shout out to Long Rider on that donation that you sent means a lot means a lot to the kid and uh very thankful for you man god bless that was just awesome stuff that you did for him really appreciate it and really appreciate the support on that later on in the show yes later on the show i got a you know a funny video i was asked a question from somebody who says what's it like to buy weed at a legal dispensary so what I did was hopped in the truck. China Dow was the cameraman, and you know she gave some commentary as well. And I showed you what it's like to go buy from a legal dispensary. And the reason why I like the street guys better, man. The prices, Jesus Christ. Anyway, even better news right now. Uh, yes, September 1st, we just put this out. We are on an endeavor to make an online radio station all about biker radio. It's going to be a southern rock, blues, and of course, hard rock station, as well as talk shows. Yes, we're getting some talk shows together. If you're interested in getting your own show, here's what you're going to have to do. Email me info at insane throttle biker news.com let me know your ideal for your show and we'll talk basically all you need is some common sense a microphone some equipment and you're ready to go because i already paid uh, the licensing fee for the music and all that good stuff we're designing the station now uh let me know scheduling all that type of stuff you're gonna want at least once a week for the show that you're gonna do if you want to do more do more man if you want to take a night slot a day spot it's all up to you and i'll even teach you how to do the advertising that way you can get sponsorships and make a little bit of money. It's going to be called Motorcycle Madhouse Biker Radio. And I'm really looking forward to it. You know, uh, great stuff, especially the, the music, man. You know, I like the older stuff, but, you know, I wanted to throw in some, uh, you know, oldies. You know, but not a lot of people are into the oldies like me. So, but... Real good stuff. Again, if you're looking to get your own show and getting into the business and really working hard, this might be the place for you, man, because it goes worldwide and all that good stuff. Man, I'll teach you about all platforms, YouTube, all that good stuff. So it's a way to get involved in the business, if you would. Again, about a week before it launches, I'll make sure to get the app out there. It's a free app to listen to on your phone. You Again, you just like uh, the Biker News Show, you can take it to work with you, listen on the radio, the whole nine yards. So it's going to be a fun uh, state of affairs instead of a sad state of affairs. Today, we will be uh, covering news out of Ohio with the Mongols and the Hells Angels as well as some of the good that uh, the bikers do. Man, this one story about how they uh, took care of this one kid, man, to his funeral. Oh, man, uh, sad stuff. I had a tear in my eye from it. And, of course, we got the Wall of Shame coming up. Yes, Corey Graff and his Wall of Shame. Hey, Corey, man, maybe you should do a program, you know, when the radio station comes out, the Corey Graff Wall of Shame and, uh, you know, the what Leo does bad, something like that, man. you got to come up with a better name than that for, you know. Anyway, so uh, right now, let's uh, head on to the news and uh, have some fun today. Again, I really appreciate you, Long Rider. That was awesome. Un that was surprising, actually. Uh, really appreciate it. But let's get on to the 
be new. Okay, we're going to start this show out on the road here, man. Cleveland.com. This is the Metro section. Man fatally shot another stab in fight between Mongols and Hells Angels motorcycle gangs at Valley View Gas Station, official says. And, of course, before you guys start getting on that kick, I am just reading the damn story, giving some opinions. I'm not calling them gangs. That was the damn freaking newspaper, not me. Anyway, uh, by Adam Farise, Cleveland.com. A fight between two motorcycle gangs ended with one gang member stabbed and another fatally shot at a gas station, officials said. Ohio Bureau of Criminal Investigation spokesman Steve Irwin. Steve Irwin. Hey, wasn't he the dude out of Australia that was like the crocodile man or something like that? He always played with crocodiles and rattlesnakes and gave, whoa, you know, he used to do all that stuff. Uh, he was pretty cool, man. Didn't he die from a stingray or something like that? I heard his kids are involved. Uh, anyway, yeah, Steve Irwin said the fight involved members of the motorcycle gangs you see how they keep on saying that with the freaking news motorcycle gangs the mongols and the hell's angels Irwin said bci will ask agents with the u.s bureau of alcohol tobacco firearms and explosives for us why the hell are they call an atf in that makes no sense in something like this uh, with the investigation because the federal agency is an expert in motorcycle gang investigations. That makes no sense. What do you guys think? I don't think that makes sense with the ATF. You know, I think they go FBI or some stupid crap like that. Uh, the incident happened about 9 p.m. Uh, near the gas pumps outside the Shell gas station on Gra uh, Granger and Canal Roads. If any of the listeners are out there that know about this story, live in that area, let me know. Irwin said, based on BCI's preliminary investigation, a man stabbed the rival biker gang member at the gas station. A member of the rival biker gang then shot and killed the man who did the stabbing, Irwin said. Uh, the county medical examiner identified the dead man as James Fuller, 53. Irwin said the man who fatally shot Fuller was initially detained but has since been released from police custody. Irwin said he could not release the shooter's identity. Valley View Police Detective Joseph Fernando said on Monday refused to provide basic information on the incident and said the police department will release no information on the shooting, instead deferring to BCI. Yeah, it's a small town freaking uh, police department. Uh, the state agency is leading the investigation. Uh, Valley View uh, Mayor Jerry Pazaki said he didn't know the facts of the incident and planned to meet with the police chief, David Nero, on Monday. A manager at the gas station referred a reporter to the corporate office. Messages left at the corporate office were not immediately returned. So if uh, one's being released, he was initially detained, the shooter, it's going to go with a self-defense type of deal. You can already tell that. Uh, you know, self-defense is something else. Even if you have a damn video to prove that it was self-defense, they still mess with you. Sad state of affairs when that happens. And there's people in jail for that that haven't been released. You know, we're thinking about you. Uh, anyway, again, between Hell's Angels and the Mongols at a Valley View gas station. Now, let's go to U.S. News. Three hurt in minute shooting. Uh, North Dakota, the police said uh, three men were hurt in an early morning shooting on Sunday. Dispatchers got a call around 2.30 a.m. from somewhere near the Ice Cold Riders Motorcycle Club reporting gunshots. And what's interesting about this is the Ice Cold Riders Motorcycle Club, they're always in the news for doing such good stuff, man. They're raising money for charity, the whole nine yards. So when I seen this one, I was like, no damn way, man. They're always out there doing good. Uh, now, I'm not saying it was a club. I'm just saying, you know, they said 
it was the near the motorcycle club, but they're always in there. Uh, police said three men ages 22, 26, and 42 were shot and wounded and were taken to the hospital by private parties. One victim was treated and released while the other two were admitted. Police are investigating and say no other information about the victims or their conditions is available. Well, don't they always say that? They're in bed. They're being busybodies. Anyway, here's the story I was talking about. Real. It was a heartbreaking story. K-A-L-B. More than 75 bikers escort a two-year-old's body to his funeral. Sad state of affairs. Sad state of affairs. Let's see if I can get this uh, the pull up right away. If not, I'll just go into the article. The death of a two-year-old child and his love for motorcycles brought one local community together today as his family laid him to rest. I had a chance to see the send-off, and now you can see it for yourself. More than 75 bikers showed up today in Mansur at the Why Not Stop to show respect to a two-year-old that passed away. Well, all these bikes gathered up because this little angel that's flying away today um, loved motorbikes and wanted, you know, to be a part of a motorbike club and ride motorbikes. So they all gathered up today so we can escort him to his resting place. And today, the child's love for bikes turned into the family's biggest support system. It's, it's great to show support for uh, Malcolm and the family, or, or personal friends of ours. And um, it's just a great show of support. It's... Carter was just a friend of Malcolm. Malcolm bikes. is a family friend of my kids. Um, he's always been there for us when we need it. And at a time with, with race and, and color being a problem, um, I thought what better way to show that we can all come together, that this little community does come together when we all need. And sure enough, we had people come out of Texas and we, we got everybody together. And I thank you so much, so much for doing this for him. All together, they go for one last ride off into the sunset. And I've said it once and I'll say it again. It's probably the coolest thing I've seen all day, despite the unfortunate circumstances. I love seeing people come together. But, uh, I, you know what? I have to freaking agree, man. Uh, that was just something out of that brought a tear to my eye. A two-year-old being uh, escorted uh, to his final resting place by a bunch of bikers. So that's why it's so important uh, when you're going by kids and they wave at you. Don't be a bunch of pricks. Wave back at them kids because that image that is getting burned into their head is bringing them in the lifestyle. That's kind. Of, that's how I got started, man. As a kid, seeing the Harleys coming up, I was like, man, one day I'm gonna be that. Again, don't be pricks. Don't try to be a badass. Uh, you see kids, way back at them. Don't be schlucks. That's what I have to say. This next story really burnt my ass, man. <laughs> and you know what? I'm sure everybody else has seen this one, uh, but I wanted to cover it here. It's not uh, a biker news related, but something that was really screwed up uh two brothers a girlfriend arrested in massacre of three best friends just on a fishing trip everybody knows i love fishing and i think that's what's hit the cur you know you know hit the nerve uh by cbs news through uh six Two brothers and a woman have been arrested in connection with the massacre of three best friends, and there's the schlucks right there, the low lives, who set out on a fishing trip at Central Florida late last week. Polk County Sheriff uh, Grady Judge said Wednesday one of the suspects, Tony T.G. Wiggins, 26, had previously been charged with 230 felonies and had been consistently arrested since he was 12. Didn't I talk about that in the last video, how these people are not doing their jobs? 230 felonies. You're kidding me. I, well, what am I talking about? That happens here in the Chicago. But 230s have been on, he's been arrested since he's 12 years old? My God, this system is broken, man. Quote, he's the kind of guy who would punch you in the face for no reason. Well, somebody should have slit his throat. Uh, his brother, William Robert Wiggins, 21, and his girlfriend, Mary Whitmore, 27, were also arrested. 
The three suspects are scheduled to have their first court appearance. Uh, investigators interviewed all three suspects and said their stories were inconsistent and contradicting. Neither Tony Wiggins nor Mary Whitmore are cooperating with detectives. They are accused in the shooting and beating deaths of Damian Tillman, Kevin Springfield, and Brandon Rollins on Friday night as they gathered at a remote boat ramp at Lake Streety near Frostproof. Judge, who has worked at the agency since 72, called the crime scene horrific, describing the deaths as a massacre. He said the men were beaten and shot up. Well, that's what you have when you got animals out there with 200-something uh, felonies on them. Treat them like an animal. If he's found guilty, treat him like an animal. Go medieval on him. That will stop all this crap. I'll go into that on my final thoughts. According to the sheriff, Tillman was at a Dollar General store in the area and mentioned he was meeting his friends to go fishing at the lake. The store clerk later told investigators the suspect were in the store and overheard Tillman saying he was meeting up with his friends. Judd uh, said Tony Wiggins told his brother to drive to the lake. Once there, Tony Wiggins confronted Springfield, accusing him of stealing his truck and selling the engine. Judge said investigators have not yet determined whether the allegation is true. The brother told the detectives Tony Wiggins shot all three victims, then asked him to help put Tillman in the back of the truck. The sheriff said the trio then went to McDonald's and ordered 10 double cheeseburgers and two chicken sandwiches. Rollins was still alive when the attackers left. He called for his father to, for help. The father arrived about 10 minutes later, but forgot his cell phone in a rush to help his son, so he went to the convenience store to get help. By the time uh, help arrived, his son had died. Detectives received tips about the case and obtained video from the store. During a search warrant at the suspect's home, investigators found a gun that killed the victims. He's charged with first-degree murder, tampering with evidence, and possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. His brother and girlfriend are charged with accessory after the fact. All three were expected to appear before a judge. Thursday afternoon. Attorneys for them were not listed on court records. Earlier, Judd had announced a reward of $30,000 leading to the arrest. Man, that out of CBS News. Like I said, I wanted to get that out there. Uh, Corey Graff's wall of shame, baby. Louisiana police officer arrested on a brutality charge. A Northwest Louisiana police officer has been arrested after a man accused him of a police brutality. Hmm. Monroe police officer Jared DeSander, you are in that Corey Grass wall of shame, baby, was arrested Saturday and booked into jail on charges of malfeasance in office and second degree battery. Local news outlets report he is accused of beating up Timothy Williams in April after he tried to run from police and then surrender. Hmm, little fishy there. April, now, uh, you know what, whatever, I'll just keep going. Williams accused as many as eight officers of punching and kicking him after he is arrested. Yeah, this, this smells bad. You know what? <laughs> okay uh, I think in my final thoughts to cover this uh, the Monroe Police Department says that besides charging him it has placed four other officers on leave the city says investigators have not yet concluded whether the unnamed officers use too much force uh, let's see here. Williams was stopped while police officers were looking for the source of an alarm. According to the arrest report, Williams produced a fake black handgun from underneath his shirt. He's lucky he didn't get shot. In a search, officers located a crack pipe. <laughs> there you go. You know, crack pipe. Uh, the plot thickens on this one. Uh, and Williams ran. He was later transported to a hospital for lacerations he suffered while trying to evade capture. Uh, he, they, the cops say body camera footage, and I want to see this, will be released soon uh, from the incident. One more uh, wall of shame here from Corey uh, Graff. NYPD cop arrested and others arrested in drug d distribution ring. No, don't say it so. No, I can't believe it. Not cops involved. Here we go.
This is obviously uh, a shocking case because it involves a member of law enforcement dealing drugs uh, in our community, uh, which is very concerning. Uh, and we're going to hold him accountable. NYPD officer Joseph Recca from West Islip, one of three Long Islanders facing charges alleged to be part of a drug ring. Very shocking. You know, it's uh, shocking to hear that. Uh, I got four nephews that are on the, on the force, so, you know, I'm sure they wouldn't be happy. Also charged Michael Corbett and Michael Sosa. Prosecutors say more than $75,000 in cash was seized, as well as drugs and drug paraphernalia. This was a local drug distribution network selling pills, uh, basically purporting to be oxys, oxycodone. We would not be surprised if this turns out to be uh, fentanyl pressed pills. Uh, or some sort of fentanyl analog. Prosecutors say a fatal drug overdose in Copeg triggered the investigation. We're not linking uh, at this point the overdose of the individual in Copeg to the drugs that RECA sold. We know that RECA was selling drugs to that individual in Copeg around the time that he overdosed. If the death is linked to the drug ring, manslaughter charges could also be filed. Rekka didn't say anything after his arraignment. Right, Rekka, anything to say? Except a no comment. But his father spoke briefly. He's a great guy. And I don't have comment on what's going on, but I'm shocked just as much as everyone else. The New York City Police Department says Rekka has resigned. Of the three defendants, bail was only set for Sosa. No one came to the door here at his Brentwood home. Sosa's being held on $100,000 cash for a $1.5 million partially secured bond. Authorities say they found a loaded, untraceable gun at his home. Sosa's lawyer claims Rekka was the ringleader and Sosa was just a minor player. No one answered the door at Corbett's West Islip home. His attorney says drugs found in his home were prescribed by a physician. All three sure defendants pleaded not guilty. Yeah, sure they were. Hey, what were uh, what are you cops saying about one percenters and motorcycle clubs now? You know about the drug distribution rings, man. Corey Graff, you nailed them on this one, man. You nailed them. Say, you know what? They're doing the same stuff that they claim everybody else is doing. So, yes, that's your hall of shame or wall of shame, man. Not hall of shame, wall of shame uh, by Corey Graff. Good one, Corey. Awesome stuff. Carrie here from Beggar Syndicate Cycles. Just to let you know about the place that has the craziest hats on the market. Apparel that's based all upon bikers, baggers, and brotherhood. And ladies, we didn't forget about you either. Between tank tops and baby doll tees, we have it all. Now just go to BaggerSyndicateCycles.com and check it out. Mwah. And there's Karen. My final thoughts are coming up. Hey, Karen, where's my poster from my wall? I need one. Autograph that sucker, sweetheart. Anyway, ain't that very interesting what Corey Graff came up with, with the wall of shame. Yes, a NYPD cop out of Long Island, yes, involved in a drug ring and fentanyl at that probably. You know, they're claiming it was oxy, but it's fentanyl. Uh, that seems to be the thing uh, today. What I never get, and maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, tell me. Why can't people just smoke weed, man? It gives you the buzz you need. It makes you happy. It don't make you into a zombie. You're not walking the streets like, ah, you, you ain't doing it on weed. You're Cheech and Chongin', man. So what's the need for fentanyl, heroin, all that kind of stuff? I just don't get it. Can somebody please explain it to me? Because on this subject, hooked on phonics didn't work for me. I can never answer this question. Why you go overboard like that, man? You know, I've heard, well, it's one of the best feelings around. Yeah, man, when they're sticking a, a pen in you to get you guys to wake up and stuff. Or you look like zombies walking down the street and you're like walking dead, man. You ever go to the south side of Chicago? I call it zombie land, man, because that's all they doing down there. It's like, damn, man, we got walking dead. You know, Rick Grimes around this sucker somewhere. <laughs> just don't get it but anyway you know it just goes to show you how hypocrites that the cops are they'll say this and that why don't you list yourselves as gang members for Christ's sakes man when are you guys gonna get recoed you're always recoing everybody else when are you gonna get it
It's a simple question. I have never once seen a law enforcement officer get recoed, even though they're doing the same stuff others are doing. It was funny. I watched this one program uh, yesterday on Netflix. Had to do about the New York in the 1970s and how the RICO law came about with the uh, organized crime. And the cops were just as bad, man. What the hell? They didn't get recoed. But, I, you know, I'm going to keep on going round and round on that one. And, uh, again, can somebody please tell me what this trip is about fentanyl with heroin? Why can't you just stick the 420 like Max behind me, man? Like Max. I had to get myself here. You know, in the next video, this right here is Bio Jesus, okay? Okay. Uh, somebody asked me what it's like to go to a dispensary and buy that's legal because they live in a state that it's illegal on. So, after I get done with my final thoughts, you're going to see I got the video coming up of, you know, China Doll, she's the camera woman. And, you know, I go in there and buy this damn thing right here. And you guys are going to wonder why I like going to street dealers instead. Other news, uh, in that wasn't that a wonderful story with that uh, two-year-old, you know, it's a sad story, he passed away, but he got his ride that he wanted from all the bikers escorting him uh, to his final resting place, and again, you meatheads, don't ever try to act bad around a two-year-old, three-year-old, or some kid, man, because they're looking at you in awe. They can't wait, you know, they practice, they ride their bikes like they're on a motorcycle. So don't be schmucks, man. Just don't do it. You know, I hate people that are like that. Uh, as for the shootings before, I get it. Can we all get along? Can't we do this and can't we do this? We gotta fight the government, man. Why can't we just get along? It's none of your damn business, that's why. Again, there's history that goes way beyond your comprehension with some of these motorcycle clubs. And if this is the way they handle business, that's the way they handle business, man. What can I tell you? Well, wouldn't it make it better for all of us bikers? No, man. <laughs> Again, it, you know, I get a lot of that from people who actually don't wear patches and stuff. So... It's like, dude, just get on your bike and go ride in something, man. You know, you'll never understand. So, you know, don't put them comments there and guarantee I'll get a bunch of them. <laughs> I just will. I know it. That's the way it works. It does. That's the way it works. So, anyway, uh, I'm going to take you into uh, the next video. You guys, make sure to subscribe to us on Spotify and all that type of stuff. As for my part in the show, I am done here, but go ahead and watch the video. I You'll like it. Goodbye. Vamos. Adios. Ciao. So long. Get your hat jacked. Yeah. Know how to buy weed? Well, here in Illinois, this is how you buy weed. It's right on the Illinois Wisconsin border, and you gotta say thanks to China Doll, she's the camera woman right now. And you're gonna see why I like buying weed from a street dealer. Oh man, I gotta put my mask on. Yeah, you get to see me in my mask. Hey, at least this shit ain't freaking. Uh, like in Rockford, man, this is, uh, it's not too bad. I'll be right back and show you the reason why. Okay. They can only let so many in the, in the place at a time because of the six foot distancing and the uh, limit of people allowed into a store at one time. Aw, uh, how cute. They come out with cute orange bags with pot in them. And what's even great, people are walking up and they go, Oh, you have online orders? So you can even do online orders and come and pick up your stuff. Why is this road coming to you? Nope, he didn't need cash. He needed his ID. Because you must have ID when you're buying stuff in the Illinois pot store. Check out security. <laughs> oh, gotta let him in. Gotta hold the door for him because we don't know, but want nobody touching our doors. 
and here he comes. Walking out with this cute little orange bag. What happened? Oh, my Confederate flags, I guess. Oh, so you want to hear what's funny, and of course I did not have video rolling like I have video rolling right now. The guy that delivers our daily uh, Herald newspapers at the gas station, he just walked out with a bag. 25 bucks. Gotta get a lot better on the street. 25 bucks. But for the guy who asked me a question, that's how you go to a dispensary in Illinois. And look at a cute little take-home bag for one... <laughs> One, mind you. They have to do with the uh, concealer. Because it's like conceal and carry, I guess. One gram, 25 bucks. One gram, $25. Aren't you guys all excited? He'll, he would have this gone in like not even a day. Bye, oh, Jesus, man. Hey, but I like the vial. Can I keep it? Yeah. That's it. Don't forget to go over to HarleyLiberty.com. Get all your motorcycle club news. What's happening in the scene? We have a new article or articles every single day over at HarleyLiberty.com. And don't forget the sister site, BikerLifestyleMagazine.com. If you're into all that kind of manufacturer motorcycle and news, motorcycle rallies and bikers help in the community motorcycle club editorials and more and don't forget to visit us on facebook get involved in the conversation watch videos done a motorcycle madhouse and more also we have instagram yes instagram we have material that is not seen anywhere else so don't forget get on our platforms check out your daily biker news rock on Hey guys, this is Kara from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. I just want to let you know about a place where you can get the greatest apparel, top of the notch, all about baggers, bikers, and brotherhood. And ladies, don't you worry, we didn't forget about you. Check it out at baggersyndicatecycles.com. Yo show is now available on Spotify and all major platforms including iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, and more. Don't forget to become a subscriber on any one of these platforms so you can be notified right away when our weekly episode is uploaded so you never miss an episode. Hi, this is James Hollywood Machikari. Join our YouTube channel and get Motorcycle Madhouse and tons of videos related to the bikers. Join now by subscribing for free and become part of the crowd today. Always free and always entertaining. Don't forget to visit us at www.harleyliberty.com for your daily biker news. Rock on!